The only thing we know about St. Scholastica is what we're told in the dialogues of St. Gregory the Great, who lived about 50 years after Benedict and Scholastica. And we just know from him that he that she was Benedict's sister and that she founded a Benedictine community of women, presumably following the same rule as Benedict's, though that doesn't actually say that. And there's the famous story of um, their final meeting uh, when they've had this yearly custom of getting together uh, one day a year and simply spending the day in a holy conversation. One year then it happened, Scholastica sensing that her time was short, she wanted to prolong the holy conversation into the evening. Well, Benedict's rule provides the monk is to be back in his monastery before, before nightfall, except in extreme circumstances. He didn't consider the desire of his sister simply to chat longer, even though they were, though they were chatting. Gregory explicitly says in holy things, uh, he didn't consider that a good enough reason. And so he says, no, I must be back in my monastery. And so um, Scholastica bowed down her head in prayer and an immense thunderstorm came up that made it impossible then uh, for Benedict to leave. And so you know, there's a dramatic little scene, sister, what have you done? And she says, well, uh, you, I, I begged you, but you wouldn't listen to me. So I spoke to God and he did. And Gregory explains the scene then to uh, his interlocutor in the dialogues, a fellow named Peter, and says what happened there was simply that God, gave, gave, God granted her prayer because she loved more. Um, and it's kind of a symbolic thing. You know, it's usually taken in the sense of, um, you know, that while rules are necessary and they are important, there are times when the needs of others will make, you know, make human-made rules take a secondary place. And so this is a kind of an example of that.